Hi folks. Well tonight it's a full moon. Well, almost a full moon. It's, it's about 98% full I think. Um, and it's set to be clear early on, uh, early evening, for a couple of hours before it clouds over. So what I thought I'd do is I'd dust off the um, SkyMax 180 uh, Mac gas and do a little uh, bit of lunar imaging. Um, despite the fact it's almost full, uh, the moon that is, uh, there's a really interesting feature that's actually visible quite near the um, western terminator and it's called Schroeter's Valley or Valley Schroeteri I think it's called uh, and, it, and it's well worth having a look at. It, it's, it's apparently it's, it's uh, one of the, if not the, longest sinuous rill on the moon. So I thought I'd have a, a bash at that in, and uh, see how the, the, the Mac cast performs. So um, just waiting for uh, the sun to set and uh, we'll get everything set up. I'm Dr Ray and welcome to Astrogadge. Here we are in Virtual Moon Atlas, which is a really good bit of software, really useful for planning imaging at a particular phase of the moon. Schroeter's Valley, or its, it's posh Latin name, Valles Schroeterae, is located in the northwest quadrant, and nearby is Oceanus Procellarum. Uh, to the northeast, we've got Mare Imbrium, and to the North is Sinus Iridum. Like I say, it, it, it is a plateau, and to the south of that plateau, there are two craters. The first of these craters is an impact crater, and it's got a very high albedo, which means it reflects a lot of the, 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 the sunlight um, uh, and, and it makes it very bright, uh, which in turn makes it quite difficult to expose correctly, as you'll probably see. Um, it's it's an impact kit crater, and as you can see, there's there's lots of ejector uh, detail around it, uh, and that's called Aristarchus. And next to that, there, there's another crater called Herodotus. And just north of Herodotus, uh, we have this little area here, which is actually a crater, um, and it's it's quite a deep crater, and it's referred to as a cobra's head. And that is believed to be uh, the volcanic source of the valley itself. And the um, the rill or the valley, uh, Schroeter's Valley, extends sort of northwards to begin with, and then it sort of curves out towards the west, and then sort of curves down southerly directions to the sort of southwest. It's, as I said earlier, it's the largest sinuous rill on the moon. It has a maximum width of about 10 kilometers. It's believed to be volcanic. Uh, and this, um, this plateau was uh, the, the site for the planned landing of Apollo 18, which of course never happened because the Apollo program was scrapped after Apollo 17. So, so it is an area of, uh, or of scientific interest. Alright, so since I did the review on the, the SkyMax 180, uh, I've made a couple of additions to it. I've done this, uh, or I've made this um, dew shield out of an old yoga mat, glued it, put some Velcro on, and you know it does the job. Underneath that, I've got a, a heater strip, um, which is connected up to a controller here. Uh, and um, yeah, it seems to be doing the job quite nicely. On the tail end of the uh, of, of the uh, telescope, I've got the uh, an, well a new camera. I've got the um, ASI one seven eight monochrome, uncooled, and it's uh, this is its first light really. So I was uh, 
quite interested to get and see how it performs. So I've just had a warning on the computer that I'm getting low in disk space, so that's my own fault. So there's a, a salutary lesson there is every so often check uh, check your laptop or whatever to me, uh, see how many files are on the damn thing that I forgot to delete uh, from previous Astro sessions. So I'll go and do that now and um, Hopefully the, the scan will keep clear for a little while. It's 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 about um, quarter to seven at night now and it's due to cloud over in about an hour so hopefully we'll get a little bit more data before that happens. Okay, so what I wanted to do was uh, try some imaging tonight with the IR pass filter uh, because that actually um, helps to um, mitigate atmospheric disturbance uh, by, by just letting the infrared wavelengths through. But you know what? I've mislaid it. <laughs> I can't find it. Oh, typical. So, uh, tomorrow before I, or after I do the, the processing what we've got, uh, I'm going to be pulling the house apart to find the damn thing. Anyways, so that's the situation so far. Let's just continue it and see what happens. Okay, so uh, I think that's about enough data I've got actually. Uh, I'm not going to push my luck any further because uh, it, it's going to uh, cloud over soon, <laughs> or so they say. Um, so uh, I'll, I'm going to um, process the data and I'll get back to you once I, I do that. I'm just going to show you the basic workflow that I perform for uh, lunar imaging. I'm not going to go into any detail about the settings, what settings they're using this this particular session. I think I'll do that in a future one but however it gives you an idea of the processes that I go through so I use uh, PIP which I'll explain about shortly or to stack art and Registrax as well as Topaz, uh, Topaz Sharpen AI. So normally I use auto stack art um, to process um, lunar images. I've got just shy of 2000 frames uh, in this video. Which, um, before I actually stack my images in Auto Stack Art, what I do is I use this software here. It's, it's called Planetary Imaging Preprocessor, otherwise known as PIP. And what it does is, once you put your um, video file in from your session, what this effectively does as it, is it, it selects the best quality frames from that clip and puts them in order. So effectively what it's doing is it's filtering out a lot of the poor frames before you actually go into doing the main processing or stacking in AutoStacker. So it's like a pre-filter for want of a better word and I find it gives really really good results if you do this before you actually do the proper stacking in AutoStacker. Once I've got the filtered video from PIP I then simply input it into AutoStack Art. Just go through the usual process of uh, analysis, um, stacking options, and stacking. But I, I actually do drizzle in AutoStack Art. Again, I'm not going to go into the entire features of this. Uh, suffice it to say that this is what I use to produce the final stacked image. This is my workflow. Once I've actually got a stacked uh, image, from Otto Stackart, and then import that image into Registax, where I perform some wavelet um, sharpening. I tend to keep it as minimal as possible because what I subsequently do is then take that sharpened image and put it through Topaz AI Sharpen, which I talked about in a previous video. So, as you can see, this program really does bring a lot more clarity to, to the image. Uh, as you've seen in a previous video, I, I talked about this piece of software. I haven't found it quite so good for DSOs, but 
for lunar and planetary it seems seems to work really well um, once I've, I've got an image that I'm happy with again it's just a, sim uh, a simple process of playing around with the settings I, I'll, I'll touch it up in Photoshop or Affinity or something like that well folks um that went not too bad, I thought, actually. I, I was quite pleased with the result at the end of the day. I, um, I managed to get a, a, well, I thought was a fairly decent focus compared to the last time. Um, but I, I'm just about to uh, put the, the completed or completed processed image up for you to have a look at. But what I'm also going to do for a little bit of fun is, is put a still photograph up that was taken from Apollo 15 when it flew over that particular region uh, and it took some photographs. It wasn't, of course, the, the landing site for Apollo 15. It just happened to be flying over it and they took some photographs. Uh, now, I'm not saying that uh, <laughs> my uh, attempts are in the same league of uh, a photograph taken uh, here a few miles above this region. But, but what I think is quite interesting, I, I don't think it's actually that bad. And I think um, it just shows you what you can achieve um, from our earthbound uh, positions here on Earth, it just shows you what we can achieve with fairly modest equipment, actually. Um, so I'll, I'll put that up in a second, but first I just want to say thanks for watching, and uh, if you, thanks for subscribing to the channel, which I really appreciate it. It's, uh, it really uh, motivates me to do more, as long as you keep watching, I'll keep making them. And um, if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, please feel free to subscribe or press the like button. It'd be really appreciated. But uh, again, before, just before I put the images up, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. And remember, keep watching the skies. Watch the skies everywhere. Keep looking. Keep watching the skies.